Today, we're going to go over subgraphs in Unity and material functions in Unreal. Let's go! Before we get too far into this topic, let's step back and cover some basics. What is a subgraph or a material function? First of all, in Unreal, these are called material functions and in Unity, they're called subgraphs. But really, we're talking about the same thing. It's a container that contains graph logic, or in other words, it's a graph within a graph. For those of you familiar with coding, a subgraph or material function is similar to a function call in code, where you take a block of code and make it into a function, and then you can call it from various places in your code uh, and just write it once. Also, subgraphs or material functions can be saved out as their own separate assets and can be added to multiple graphs. So what does all this mean exactly? Well, let's take a look at an example. So let's say you're working on a project and you open this rock shader that someone else has made and you need to make some changes. How long does it take you to figure out what's happening here and what needs to be changed. I can see a couple of different problems with the way that this graph is set up. First of all, uh, this material is doing four different things. There's the base material over here. There's some macro detail being added to our rock uh, for when you zoom out to see the rock. There's some micro detail being added for when you zoom in. And then over here on the right, there's some logic for adding snow on top of the shader or on top of the rock material, but it's hard to tell from first glance exactly what's going on here. And you would need to kind of zoom in and take a look at the individual textures and kind of trace the wires and see how everything's fitting together to see exactly how things are happening. So uh, the arrangement of this material makes it really hard uh, for somebody looking at it for the first time to see exactly what's going on. Second, um, this part that's doing the macro detail and this part that's doing the micro detail are actually doing the exact same operation, um, but this one is using a different texture and a different size for the UV coordinates than this one. So we can see we have a texture object here and a UV coordinate multiplier of 12 for the micro detail, but a UV coordinate multiplier of 0.25 for the macro. So really these two sections are exactly the same, but we've added to the complexity by kind of just copying and pasting the nodes. And so we end up with a lot of nodes here when we really just need one, uh, one set of logic for this uh, duplicated operation. Third, uh, if I were coming in here and the artist had asked me to add an, a new feature, uh, let's say they wanted to do some triplanar projection of another kind of normal map in here, it would take me a while to uh, trace where these wires are going and maybe sort of move things out of the way so that I could add things in between. Anyway, uh, making changes in this graph would be significantly, uh, well, it would just be difficult because of uh, the way that it's set up. And then finally, this last portion over here is doing the logic for adding the snow on top of my rock. And this is kind of a problem to do it this way because it's likely that my scene will have 30 or 40 other snow shaders as well, or other types of shaders that need snow rather. And so I would need to copy and paste this into all 30 or into all of those other shaders, right? Well, what would happen if the art director then came and said, you know, I think we should make the snow uh, just a little darker or the snow has too many sparkles or that sort of thing. I would have to then open all 30 of those shaders and make the change 30 times. Uh, so obviously there's a pretty big problem with the way that this is set up. All right, let's take a look at a much better example. Here is the same exact shader, but I have it set up this time 
with material functions. And this simplifies the layout of the shader significantly. Let's go over the advantages here. First of all, it's really easy to see that this shader is doing four main things. It has a material, it has a macro detail, micro detail, and then finally, we're adding snow on the top. Next, uh, it's really easy to make changes here. If I knew that I wanted to uh, add something else, I can just grab these nodes, slide them over, and then connect something in between because I can very easily see color is coming out here and going in here. So if I want to change the color, I just need to add it right here in between. Not a lot of hunting down and kind of following, following along where the wires are going. Really easy to add. Also really easy to subtract. If I wanted to simplify this shader, I knew, for example, that this was only going on a small rock, so I didn't need macro detail. I could just delete this block and reconnect these wires through. So significant advantage there. And then finally, my global effect here, the snow, is also encapsulated in a material function. So it's very easy for me to remove the snow or add this same snow into multiple other shaders. And then if I need to change the way the snow looks, I'm only changing it inside one snow subgraph. So if I double click here on this snow subgraph, I can just jump right in and I can edit this in one place. You can see that I've got this specific asset for the snow subgraph and I can just edit it here and then whatever shaders it's been added to will automatically update. So you can see there's some significant benefits to uh, organizing uh, complicated shaders into uh, subgraph or uh, material function units. All right, let's sum up and then I'll take you into Unreal and Unity and show you how to build these things in each of the game engines. First of all, subgraphs simplify large graphs by breaking them down into individual parts and making it really easy to tell what's going on. So it makes them easier to read and it also makes them run faster. Second, we use subgraphs instead of copying and pasting repeated logic. In the rock graph that I showed you, the macro detail and micro detail were exactly the same thing, just with different input parameters. And so by making a subgraph, I was making it really easy to repeat that logic uh, without copying and pasting. Next, uh, repeated functionality can be edited in one place. So this applies to the macro, mi micro detail of the rock and also to the snow. If I needed to make a change, I could just make it in one subgraph rather than having to open all of the different shaders that were doing that and change them each individually. Using subgraphs or material functions also allows for modular mix and, mix and match shader creation so you can easily add and remove components uh, without um, kind of tr having to trace wires and error prone processes. If you have anything, everything split up into these little modules, it's really easy to uh, add and move effects. And finally, subgraphs provide a way to divide up your shader uh, between local differences, um, what's going on with the rock shader, for example, and global effects like snow or wear details or dirt and that sort of thing that gets added kind of at the end of the material. So if I create one subgraph where all of those things happen, uh, I can put that in each of my shaders and then just edit it in one place where I've divided my shader between things that are specific to the rock and things that are more global effects like, like weather or uh, adding dirt. All right, well, let's jump into Unreal and Unity and I'll talk about how to create these and use them in each of the game engines. All right, here we are in Unity. And the first thing that I wanna show you is how to create a subgraph. There are actually two ways to do it. The first is you can be inside a shader graph asset. And if you just select some of the nodes, you can right click on them and pick convert to subgraph. And this will create a new subgraph from the nodes you have selected. Another method of creating a subgraph is to just come down here into your project and find the folder where you want the subgraph to live. 
and you just right click and pick create shader graph subgraph and that's the method that we're going to use for now so i'm just going to call this my subgraph and now i can open it up to edit so the first thing that you see when you open a brand new subgraph is this output node and there are no input nodes so the next thing that i want to cover is how to create inputs and outputs for your subgraph let's talk about inputs first just like we create inputs for um, uh, regular shader graph assets we also use the blackboard to create inputs for subgraphs and here you can hit the plus icon and it opens up a menu with a list of data types and these are the different data types you can use uh, for your subgraph inputs so if you wanted to input a color you could pick color here or if you wanted to input a vector 3 you could pick that vector three item. Let's let's create a color for now, and I'm going to name it my color. So now I've defined the name of my input and also the color of my input. So now if I click and drag this into the graph, now I've added that input and I can add uh, nodes and logic here, and then I can uh, wire that into the output. So the color here is showing up as a vector four. You can see that because the wire is pink. And if I just drag it uh, all the way across and connect it to the output, I've just connect. I've just created uh, like the most basic subgraph you can make. So that's how you create inputs. I'll create another one here. I'll create it as a float and I'll just call it my float. And I can drag that in. And if I want to, I can multiply between my color and my float. So I'll just multiply those two together and then drag that and connect it to the output. And now let's take a look at how you edit the output. If I open my graph inspector here with the output node selected, you can see that I have this inputs or this input section here because it's the inputs of the output node. <laughs> That's slightly confusing, uh, but but we'll figure it out. Uh, and I want to call this just plain out. So I'm going to get rid of this vector four. So if I want to rename things, I can just name them here. I can also remove outputs by selecting them here and pressing the minus icon. And I can add outputs by clicking this plus and uh, and picking their data type here. So here I'm just going to call this float out. And now if I want to, here's my float in and I can just wire that and connect it to float out. So right now, this is a pretty basic graph. It doesn't do a whole lot, but I have been able to show you how to define inputs and outputs for my subgraph. Now, if I save my asset and switch over to a regular shader graph, here is my subgraph asset down in my project and I can just click and drag it into my shader graph asset and now you can see I've got a new subgraph with my color and my float inputs and out and float out outputs just the same as I defined here. So what I set up here is what ends up showing on this node here. So when I'm creating a subgraph, I'm basically designing my own node. I can design the inputs, what types they are and what they're named, and I can design the outputs and what types they are. And now I can just connect uh, whatever I want to up to the inputs and to the outputs. And when I'm in my subgraph here, I can create whatever, I, whatever logic I want inside. So I can make this a subgraph that does all kinds of things uh, and then outputs the result. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty intuitive to set up the order. So if I'm here uh, in my regular graph, you can see that the input ports have an order and the output ports have an order. It's pretty intuitive to set that up because it's just the order that they appear here in the blackboard and also the order that they appear here uh, in this list of inputs for the output node. All right, there are a couple of more tricks that I wanna show you. 
let's say that I want to set up some defaults for my inputs. So right now I have my float and I have my color. And if I select the my color node here in the blackboard and then look at the inspector, you can see that I have a default value over here and the color is currently black. Well, if I want this to default to something else, I can use the color picker here and select the new default color that I want to use. I can also apply the same thing to this my float value. So if I select that in my blackboard and I come over here to the graph inspector, I can give uh, the my float input a default value. It always defaults to one at the beginning, but I can change that and I can set it to, or I mean, I'm sorry, it always defaults to zero at the beginning, but I can change that to something like one and I'll save it here. And now uh, it, it doesn't work if you already have an instance of the subgraph in your graph, but as soon as you drag a new one, now you can see I've got that color uh, as the default value. And I also have uh, the, the one value here for my float as the two uh, input defaults. Well, let's try something else. And this is, this is just a little bit more complicated. Let's say I add a vector two input, and I'm going to call this input UVs because I'm going to be maybe sampling a texture in the subgraph and I need some UVs to pass in. So I can drag this in and now I can use that to sample my texture. Well, what if I want to use the actual UV coordinate node as the default for my UVs? So you can see here, if I select this and come over here to set the default, I can only type in fixed uh, or hard-coded values here, I can't use uh, actual nodes from the graph as my default. Uh, but there's a new node that we uh, that has been added to Shader Graph recently uh, to allow you to set graph logic as the default for an input. And let me show you how that works. So I'm going to come here into the Create Node menu, and I'm going to type branch, and I'm going to pick this node here called branch on input connection. And now I'm going to select my UV node and check this box here called use custom binding. And then for the label, I'm going to type in here UV zero. And now I'm going to connect my UV node to this input socket on the branch on input connection node. And so what this does is I'm passing in my UVs to the branch on input connection node. So basically I'm telling it when this node is not connected, it's going to use whatever is plugged into this socket. And so I'm going to take my UVs here and plug it in there. But when it is connected, then it's going to use uh, whatever it's connected to. All right. And so now whatever I, whatever I previously had this UVs bit connected to here, I can now connect this to. All right, so when my when my port is connected, I'm going to be using the UVs, but when it's not connected, I'm going to be using this default uh, channel UV zero uh, for the UV coordinates. All right, so I'll hit save here. And actually, just for now, for temporary, I'm going to pass these UV coordinates out here uh, just so you can see what happens. So I'll go back to uh, my regular graph. I'll add my subgraph in again. And now you can see I've got this label on the input port that says UV0. And that UV0 there matches the label that I've given my input here. So I can tell it if nothing is connected, then use the UV coordinates from the graph. But otherwise, use whatever else I want to connect when I connect it to the port. So I could even do something more complicated, like I could take these UVs and multiply them by 10 and call that my default. And now when I output it or I when it's not connected, it's going to be the UVs multiplied by 10. And when it is connected, it's just going to be using whatever is connected. So pretty cool. You can define in your graph itself uh, what is going to be happening when nothing is connected to the input port 
using this branch on input connection node. All right, one last thing, and that is a node that's specific to uh, subgraphs. You can't use these in regular uh, shader graph assets, um, but you can use them in subgraphs. So here's this um, entry in my Blackboard here called a dropdown. And I can select the dropdown and I can add it to my graph. And what I get here is, you know, it, it defaults to inputs A and B and then out. And if I select this here and take a look at the graph inspector, you can see I've got a list of entries. I've got a set of entry, or I've got an entry name here, and then I can pick a default. So what this allows me to do is pick uh, or, or give the user of my subgraph the option to select different choices. So let's say I want to allow my the user of my subgraph to select uh, A is UVs. So I'll come to my drop down here and I'll change this to UV. And I'm gonna plug in UV. And then my second one is gonna be UV times 10. And then I'll plug that into my second option. And then I'll plug that into not connected. And so now what this is doing is it's going to create a drop down on my subgraph with two options, UV or UV times 10. And so that will allow the user to select which default they want. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like in the graph. So again, I'm going to add my subgraph to my scene. And now it has this drop down box. So um, by default, the UVs coming in here are just the regular UVs, but I could also choose UV times 10. And now it changes that default input to be a multiple of 10. I know these are kind of silly examples, uh, but you could use this for all kinds of things. Like for example, you could create one subgraph that had a bunch of different types of weather in it. And you could use a drop down to allow the user to pick whether they wanted rain or snow or you know whatever other kinds of uh, effects so this drop down node allows the user uh, to configure the subgraph and you can give the users lots of different choices uh, for how the subgraph is working using uh, this drop down okay uh, one more thing and that is uh, Subgraphs are actually integrated into the create node menu. So if I right click here, it brings up the create node menu. Oh, actually I need to do it inside a regular uh, graph. So I'll open up the create node menu and you can see here there's this entry here called subgraphs. And if I open this up and scroll down, I've created quite a few, but there is my subgraph. So all of the subgraphs that I create automatically show up in the create node menu and I can add them to, uh, to a new shader right from the menu. Uh, so that's a really convenient way to uh, add uh, subgraphs into uh, your shaders using the create node menu. Not only that, but you can, also sh you can also control where in the menu they show up. So let's say I wanted the, the subgraph that I just created to show up in the UV section of the create node menu instead. Well, I can go into the subgraph here and right here where up in the corner where it says subgraphs, I can double click this and I can change it to what I want the path to be where it's gonna show up. So if I type UV and save it, and now when I go to the create node menu and open UVs, there is my subgraph. So I can control where in the create node menu my unique subgraphs go. So what this does is it allows you to create your own library of subgraphs. Anytime you come up with functionality um, that's useful, that could be used in multiple shaders, uh, you can add them to this library and it just builds up this kind of like your, your own personal toolbox of nodes that do the things that you want them to do. So for an example, 
this rock detail subgraph um, also shows up here. So if I type rock detail, there it is, uh, ready to be added to any of the shaders. And I'll say the same thing for this snow subgraph. I'll just type snow and there is my snow. So really powerful tool for creating your own uh, collection of tools and then being able to very easily add those tools to any of your shaders. All right, let's take a look at the same thing in Unreal. All right, here we are in Unreal and let's first take a look at the, the method for creating a subgraph. So we're gonna come down here to our content drawer and I'll just right click and under the material menu, I'm gonna pick a material function. So again, in Unity, it's called a subgraph and in Unreal, it's called a material function. And a lot of times people put MF in front of these uh, just so that they can keep track of what's a material function. And I'm just gonna call this my function and then I'll open it up. And just like we saw in Unity, we start out with one output. So the first thing that I wanna take a look at is how to add inputs and outputs. If we open up our, um, our searcher menu here and we just type function. Unreal has a couple of nodes that are specific to material functions. One is called a function input and the other is called a function output. So the node I have over here, output result is a function output and I can also add function input. So if I click, now I've added a function input. You can see that it shows up as red and it defaults to being a vector three. Well, I'm gonna open up um, my details panel over here and we'll take a look at the details for my input node. First of all, I can see it has a name, it's called in, and I'm just gonna call it my input. And then I can also give it a description here. So this is an input that inputs a thing. So this is useful if you wanna, if people add, uh, add your material function to their shader or their material and they wanna see what that port does, uh, you can give it a name. And when they mouse over it, it pops up a little tool tip that describes what that input is for. Now here's where you decide what type of an input it is. So you can see I click this and drop it down and there are a set of data types I can choose from. Now, if I want to define a default value here, I can type in the values for a default. So let's say if I wanted to make this red, I could type a one in the first channel there. Now you can see it's defaulting to red. Okay, this is a box here, this use preview value as default. This trips up people a lot because if I have this unchecked, let me just go ahead and show you. I'm gonna grab this and drag it over and plug it into my output. So now I've got my input here, I've defaulted it to red, I've uh, dragged it over and I'm just outputting that red value. I'm gonna show you what happens if you don't check this use preview value as default. So save my material function and now I'm gonna add it here. So I'll just drag and drop it in. There's my material function that I just created. It has the input and it has the result and I'll drag it over here and we'll plug this. Actually, let's just move it here and put it into the color socket for now. And you can see, boom, I get an error. Why is this not working? Why am I getting an error? Well, it's because there's nothing nothing connected here. Oh, there you can see the tooltip. This is an input that inputs a thing, right? Uh, it's because nothing is connected. It says missing function input, my input. So there's nothing connected here so it doesn't know what to do. And so what you have to do is come over here and check this box here, and that's telling it, use this preview as the default, as the default for the input. So if I hit save and I come back here, now the error is gone and I'm outputting that red color uh, because I'm using a default value for the input. Otherwise, you're forced to connect something there. So let's go back here. I'll uncheck this again, hit save, come back here. There's the error. 
But if I just come in here and uh, like I'll just add a, a vector three, for example, and plug that in. Now the error goes away because there is something connected. So uh, that's the principle. If this box is unchecked, you have to have something connected to the input. If it's checked, it can use this as the default value. It's also possible to use uh, another default, uh, another, or, or to use some graph logic as the default. So let's say you have a color here. Uh, let's just make the uh, let's just make the color kind of blue, like this, and let's multiply our blue color by like uh, 0.1 just to kind of make it a dark blue. Now, if I want to define a default for this input, I can connect something to this uh, input port on the left side of the input. So I could do all kinds of graph logic over here and plug it in. And what that's gonna do is if there's nothing connected to uh, my input port now, it's gonna use whatever graph logic I connected on the left side uh, to this uh, preview input port. So if we save it now and we switch back to our shader and add the function, now you can see it's working and it's gonna be using that logic that we were using before. So let's, let's use the same example that we were using in Unity. If I add uh, if I add a texture coordinate node here, let's switch my input to, uh, I'll call it UVs. And then now I'm going to connect text chord zero UVs to here. And so now um, the input is taking UVs in and I could use them to sample a texture uh, in my uh, material function. But if I didn't connect anything to uh, to this input. Let's just come here and add it again. So now it's a UV uh, input. And if I don't connect anything, it's just going to be using the default set of UVs because that's what I connected on the left side here. So really useful to be able to define an input value. What I like to do when I'm creating subgraphs is provide good enough defaults for all of the input ports that if the user just drops the subgraph in without connecting anything, they'll still get uh, a decent usable result out. Uh, and that can be really time saving. Like for this uh, snow node here, for example, if I didn't connect any of these pins, I'd still get pretty decent looking snow uh, as a result of my snow material function. Okay, a couple more things. So it is possible to define multiple inputs and multiple outputs. So if I want to define multiple inputs, I can just create multiple function inputs here. So here's my UVs. Here's my, my other thing. And that's a vector three. And I can copy it. And this is this is my third thing. Okay, so I've got three different bits coming into my material function here. How do I determine uh, what order they show up in? Because if I save this and come back here, you can see that it's doing my other thing first, my third thing second, and UVs last. So the way that you control what order the ports show up in uh, here is over here on the properties. So right down here, I've got sort priority. And so I give this sort priority a number based on what order I want these to show up in. So I want the UVs to show up first. So I'm gonna give that a sort priority of zero. I want my other thing to show up second. And then I want my third thing to show up third. So I've got zero, one, and two for my sort priorities. And now when I save it and I switch back to my shader, you can see it's gonna create the inputs in the same order that I uh, define their priorities. And the same principle works with outputs. So if I come over here and I type out, it's going to give me another function output. 
and I can um, define uh, a name and a description for my output there as well. I can't define a data type though. The data type is going to be defined automatically by whatever data I pass into it. And But I also have sort priority. So if I want my uh, result to be first, I'll give it a zero. Result one will be second, so I'll give it a one. And then we'll create one more. And this will be my last thing. And I can give it a priority of two. So now when I save this and take a look at the result, I've got result, result one, and my last thing. And they're in the order that I set up uh, the, the sort priorities. All right, cool. So that is how you create material functions in Unreal. And also I showed you how to do the same thing in Unity. Uh, a couple of closing thoughts just here uh, on your way out. I know that I've covered this before, but usually when I'm talking about subgraphs or uh, material functions, it's kind of uh, on the way to achieving some cool looking graphical effect. And I kind of gloss over it. And sometimes I skip over it altogether and, and hope that you guys will just know how to do it. Um, so I wanted to take the opportunity to make a video specifically tailored to showing you how to do these things, how to create inputs, how to create outputs, how to define the defaults, uh, how to avoid the problem of not having this box checked, that sort of thing. I, I thought it was worthwhile to spend the time doing this. And second of all, uh, what I want to mention here is when you're in the process of figuring out how a shader should behave and what it should look like, you're never going to create a shader that looks this nice and organized. And that's okay. Um, when you're creating the in the process of figuring out what your shader is going to do and how it's going to work, it's okay to just kind of make a mess and make it look like a, a plate of spaghetti because you're, you're in that creative process. However, uh, I do want to emphasize that once you get the functionality in place, and once you have the features of your shader working the way you want them to be, it is always worthwhile to go back in and clean things up, uh, to make things organized, to add little uh, labels to things, um, to group things into subgraphs or material functions, and to just make your shader nice looking. Because if you have anybody else on your team and they're, they open your shader and it looks like this, they're just gonna be like, I have, it's going to take me an hour to figure out what this is doing and to save. And, and, the, and the same thing applies to you. Actually, if you edit a shader and you let it sit there for six months, a year, and then you come back to it, you're not going to remember. And so if you take the time to go back in and make things look nice and organized, uh, you'll thank yourself later. And so will the other members on, on your team. So with that, uh, that's the end of this video. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Uh, be sure to take the time to make your shaders nice and clean and organized after you've figured out what they're going to do. And I hope you have a great week, and we'll see you all in the next video.